hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it's a genetic condition. So you're born with a, a spelling mistake in one of your genes. Um, when you're born, you, your heart is structurally normal. But then some point later on in life, the muscles of the main pumping chamber thicken up. And, and that's what causes the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So it's inherited in that you're born with it, but, but the structural changes in the heart come later on in life, normally teens and 20s, but can be any time up to your 60s, 70s and 80s. So that's, that's the cause of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. People with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can present in two ways. So people can come forward with symptoms, and typically that's chest pain, breathlessness, dizzy spells, blackouts, fast heart rates. Or, or they can present because we, we screen the wider family if we find someone with the cardiomyopathy. So if someone has the cardiomyopathy, we would then look at their first degree relatives and we would screen them with an ECG, which is 12 little dots on the chest and an electrical trace, and also an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. So like like looking at babies. So they're, they're the two ways that, that people present. And um, pretty much you can make the diagnosis with a combination of that ECG and echo, whether you're screening them or they're coming forward with symptoms. Sometimes if the, the ultrasound pictures aren't clear, we, we do an MRI scan of the heart and that sometimes can help us decide definitively yes or no. So, so that's how we make the diagnosis. So a lot of people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy don't have any signs. So, so the, you know, the, there's probably four or five hundred thousand people in the country with it. You know, the vast majority of those people don't know they've got it. Um, you know, and the vast majority probably will never come to medical attention. Um, then there's quite a few people with mild symptoms, so a little bit of breathlessness, some dizziness, some chest pain. And there's people with more significant symptoms, which is the minority, where they get bad breathlessness, they get swollen tummy and ankles, they can have fast heart rhythms, which make them black out and collapse. Um, but most people probably don't have any symptoms with them. You know, when you're managing someone with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the, the, there's three bits to it, really. So, so one is treating the symptoms. So if people have abnormally fast heart rates, you can treat those with tablets. You can do ablations. And sometimes you put in pacemakers or defibrillators. Um, if people have breathlessness or chest pain because there's where the muscle gets thickened, it can pull one of the valves towards it and it can be hard for the blood to get out of the heart. So, so maybe up to half the people have some degree of that. And if that's giving you symptoms, you can give tablets or beta blockers or the and things. Or you can do operations to, to shave away the thickened muscle. Or you can do what's called a septal ablation where you cause a, a little heart attack in that thickened bit of the septum. Um, so, so you can treat that with obstruction. And then there's a small percent of people that where the heart gets bigger and weaker with, with the scarring you can sometimes see in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And in that group of people, you, you give different types of tablets to help the heart get stronger. And you sometimes give water tablets, diuretics to, to, to help keep the pressures in the heart down. So, so they're treating the symptoms. Again, that with people don't have symptoms that you, you don't, you don't start any tablets in that setting. Um, the second part of treatment is, is picking out the very small group that might have a high risk of dangerous heart rhythm problems. And if you, if you Google hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, you see footballers dropping dead and all kinds of dreadful things. That's really, really rare. But we, we try and pick out the very small group that might be at risk of that. And then you can put in defibrillators, which whilst they're not curing anything, are keeping you safe from anything like that and then the third bit of treatment is genetic testing and screening the wider family in terms of the underlying you know genetic cause which is a, a spelling mistake in one of the proteins in the, in the heart muscles we don't have a, a treatment for that yet um, there's a new tablet called Mavacantum coming out soon which seems to have 
some direct effects on those myosin fibers and looks to be very promising. And there's lots of other sort of RNA, DNA, gene silencing work that, that's really starting to come forward. So I think within five years, we'll have a whole array of products that, that may be able to treat the underlying sort of spelling stage in the gene. So it's quite an exciting time at the moment. Exercise is good for everyone. Um, and there's, you know, specific exercise, which should be aerobic, um, resistance work and some flexibility. And then there's just daily, daily activity in, in how you live. So getting off the tube stop earlier, using the stairs rather than the lift. So, so both of those are important to, to cut your risk of the wider cardiovascular disease, cancer, all the other things. So we'd encourage everyone to exercise. With hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there's a small risk if you push yourself really hard. Um, so we'll often tell people to stick maybe below 75% of their maximal predicted heart rate, maybe not do more than an hour or so of aerobic exercise. But, but that's very sort of person dependent. So, so I would say to anyone with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, ask your cardiologist for a personalized program. Because actually there are some people with very mild disease that could run marathons and do whatever they want. And there's a small group with more significant disease where we, we probably would put stricter exercise sort of limits on. So can, everyone should continue to exercise, but it would be worth asking the cardiologist for a slightly more personalized program. Yeah, so there's no, no specific foods that, that will change the disease progression in hypertrophic Um so, so you should just have a healthy general diet. The, the cardiovascular health, the, the only diet that has a good evidence base is a Mediterranean diet. So I always recommend a Mediterranean diet. With, with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, if you're prone to, to fast heart rates, we'd, we'd probably ask people to take it easy with alcohol. So maybe stick to 10 units a week and not have big binges and, and maybe take it pretty easy with caffeine. So maybe just no more than one or two coffees a day. Yeah, so there's, there's a few um, there's a few issues that, that can have. Again, most people have mild disease where, where you don't see much in the way of physiological changes. As I said, there's a group where the thickening of the muscle sucks in one of the leaflets of the mitral valve and you get this what's called outflow tract obstruction. So the physiology of that is very much like having a narrow heart valve. You just can't get enough blood through that narrowing. So, so that's one mechanism. And um, there's another group where because of the thickening of the muscle, the heart muscle is just stiff. So it, it contracts well, but it just doesn't relax as it should. And that can lead to, to the pressures in the heart increasing. And then you get a bit of back pressure that can make you breathless and give you swollen ankles or swollen tummy. Um, and then there's a small group where you get a lot of scarring and the thickening and the heart can get, can get bigger and get weaker. And then you have the, you know, the spectrum of those who, who are more breathless, have more swelling. Um, and, and again, it's due to the pressures in the heart rising, but, but due to a different mechanism. So they're, they're the main three sort of physiological changes. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it's really important that most people with hypertrophic chronomacy will have little or no symptoms, no complications, uh, you know, and, and should live a normal life. Um, with just maybe some minor, you know, limits on, on exercising. Um, so, so most people should live a normal life. You know, there are people who, who do have symptoms and problems um, but actually a lot of those are, are very treatable with the, the medicines the operation of the devices we have these days so I think you know that the vast majority of, of people with hypertrophic chronopathy should should live a, a pretty good normal life you know there, there'll always be a small group that, that have more problems but the majority I think you know with good medical treatment should should have a good quality of life and life expectancy should be very good